life for nearly 20 years. Um, his care time has been a great inspiration in our, our family, our sangha in general. And um, I think you'll get a, you can get a feel for his own vibe because he's going to be hosting the rest of Thursday Night Care Time. Are you beautiful? <laughs> He's also, aside from our artist, he's also a very beautiful writer. He wrote a play for the Bhakti Center a couple of years ago, and he literally wrote the play for me. That's what he told me. And I was being such a diva. <laughs> and not wanting to participate. I gave him such a hard time, but I finally acquiesced, and it was one of the most beautiful experiences that I've ever had. So um, he's a really incredible person. I think you'll get a sense of that from his voice and from his speaking and for how he's nourished this family of Kirtanese that you see before you now. A round of applause for Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Dragon is such an eloquent speaker. something from Srila Prabhupada, and um, I was just, well, not tonight, I was just talking about this, and um, anyway, I can't, I'm trying to remember exactly what Srila Prabhupada said, but my mom was just so... Um, taken with this, and she said that uh, I think Srila Prabhupada was speaking about how we shouldn't be surface, we shouldn't have surface relationships with our spiritual life and with the Lord, and that we should become like deep ocean dwellers and know all of the sea creatures that live in the ocean, not that we just see the ocean and we just see, you know, the waves or whatever, but Prabhupada was encouraging us that we should become deeply uh, Deep, develop deep knowledge of all the ocean creatures in, in bhakti. You know, and the Lord is often described as a lake or an ocean, you know, Karuna Sindhu, ocean of mercy. Krishna's deep like an ocean. Uh, there's a beautiful, I think it's a verse from Mukunda Mala's Dojo where it's described, you know that verse? Krishna's the lake and his eyes are fish swimming in the, in the black lake. And his, his hands are lotuses in the black. So, so many analogies of Krishna being deep. And Prabhupada saying that we have to go deep. And my mom was using the word, quoting from Narada Muni. And Narada Muni was describing his own life. And we won't get into Narada Muni right now because that's a whole other deep ocean. But that, that meditating on the Lord, being with the Lord, chanting the Lord's names, because the Lord is the most complete of all complete things that the name and the person are the same. So you get the full thing from any aspect, from the name and the stories. So spending time with the Lord with the name allows us to penetrate deep into that ocean. So my mom was quoting something, and I was like not here. I wasn't getting it, I wasn't hearing it. I was like, you know, like I appreciate what Prabhupada was saying, but like she was like, this is one of Prabhupada's Mahavakyas. That was my mom's thing. My mom was very drunk. Prabhupada's Mahavakyas. And I was like, I, you know, and then she said, and there's a poem from Rumi, and Rumi says, well, and I was like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. And I was thinking, that's interesting how 
sometimes you have to pop culture something to be able to catch it for someone like me. But then once the doors open, then Prabhupada's Prabhupada lets us like drop into the chasm and then out deep, deep, deep. And so I was appreciating that all of us have ways of speaking and ways of presenting, and those those are gifts that we've been given to share Krishna with others. And we just should try. And something that one of us may say or do may touch someone that no, there's no no one else could have said that in that particular way. So just was appreciating that. Remind you when you quoted Rumi. So many of the gifts that we have in the bhakti tradition we see reflected in other traditions. You know, I was speaking with a devotee from the Boston Temple, and she's from the Sikh tradition. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be singing. <laughs> she, she, her father's a very devout Sikh, and she became attracted to Krishna. And her father said, you know, one day she came home and said, so tell me what it is that you're doing. You know, he's a traditional Sikh man. And so she was describing it, and he said, she said, don't you see, Dad, this is the same that you do. It's just the same thing, but it is spoken in a different way. And he said, my daughter, I can't have one foot in one boat and one foot in another boat. I have to put both feet in one boat. So I'm choosing the boat of Sikhism. Mm. But you also shouldn't have one foot in one boat and one foot in another boat. So he's encouraging her to put both of your feet in the boat of Krishna. Mm. So she said her experience in bhakti is that bhakti is helping her to be a deeper Sikh. That she's hearing and seeing things reflected in the bhakti tradition that are helping her understand her own native tradition in a more rich way. Mm. So I just I pray that we um, can celebrate each other in that way, facilitate each other in that way. And appreciate appreciate Srila Prabhupada's great contribution, even if some of us are still stuck on pop culture style and we can't <laughs> But to, to dwell with Srila Prabhupada and to pray to Srila Prabhupada to help us go deep. Jai Prabhupada, Jai
Hayır.